Hi, uh, once again, chasing the fame and fortune of YouTube, we're going to be looking at uh, some obscure nerves in the pelvis that nobody ever really looks at. Popular, right? Um, so, in the pelvis, we have some important organs. We care about urinary and fecal continence, and we care about sexual function. And it's nerves that control those things. But where do those nerves come from? Where do they go to? How do they get there? Uh, that's basically what we're talking about, some plexuses in the pelvis. And I've made some out of pipe cleaners, right? So we're gonna have like a physical re <laughs> representation. Um, the thing is, um, they're a little bit, you know, random, little bit kind of invisible, little bit not really gonna get injured. The only way they really get damaged is through surgery. See, so they're not like high on people's priority lists, but I wanted to understand the anatomy better. So I'm gonna tell you guys about it, all right? <laughs> Okay, what are, we, um, what are we innovating down here? What structures are we talking about? We're talking about viscera. We're talking about organs. So not, not like skeletal muscle, the things you can control, or the skin, the stuff that you're super aware of. We're talking about viscera, the stuff that you, you kind of know it's there, right? I mean, you know when your bladder fills up and you're there when your bladder empties and hopefully you're aware of it and that sort of thing, right? So, in this case down here, we've got the bladder. So the urethra will be dropping out of there. We've got the rectum posteriorly, the sigmoid colon, which has been chopped here. Um, if this was a, so this is gonna be a male pelvis because there's a prostate in there. If this was a female pelvis, there'd be a uterus, um, things like that, right? So, we need nerves down here too. Uh, closed sphincters to control urinary um, continence and to close sphincters to maintain fecal continence. Um, and we need uh, receptors that tell us when the bladder is stretched and when the rectum is stretched, when it's filled with stool and needs to be emptied. And if we think about sexual function, well, there are erectile tissues and that tells us something else. Um, that we need to control blood flow. So the erectile tissues, they get more blood in them at arterial pressure, and that's what causes them to erect and change shape. But also, we control, well, our bodies control the flow of blood around the body to the areas that need that blood at that particular time. We haven't got, got enough blood to go everywhere all at the same time, right? Um, so the walls of the arteries have got smooth muscle in them, so they need nerves as well to tell them to contract and let less blood get to that organ, region, or, or to relax and open up and allow more blood to go to that organ or region, right? Uh, yeah. So that's the target. Those are the organs we need to wire up. We're talking about uh, the autonomic nervous system because we're talking about viscera. We're talking about things under automatic control. That means we're thinking about sympathetic nerves and parasympathetic nerves. They're gonna be motor and drive things, smooth muscle stuff. Um, and we're talking about visceral afferents, uh, sensory nerves running from those organs back to the spinal cord and back to the brain to cause various reflexes like, ooh, bladder is stretched, release sphincter, empty bladder, higher bits of the brain can control that, that's anyway. Okay, so. Where do those nerves come from? Well, the sympathetic nerves, they come out of the spinal cord in the thoracic levels, and they, they pass out laterally to a sympathetic trunk, a sympathetic chain, a collection of ganglia, paravertebral ganglia. They've got lots of names, they're really, really fun. Uh, we've talked about these before. So the sympathetic trunk, uh, these are nerves that come out of the spinal cord at the thoracic levels down to maybe L1, L2, something like that. And they pass into a, a ganglion either side of the vertebral column. Now, those nerves can actually continue down and then they form other ganglia, other, the sympathetic trunk then continues down into the abdomen alongside the lumbar vertebrae, and it continues all the way down into the pelvis. So the sympathetic trunk continues all the way down into the pelvis. That's one place that our sympathetic nerves can come from. Now these sympathetic nerves, they can also come together and form nerves. 
Wow, that sounds really obvious now I've said it. Um, <laughs> when I think about sympathetic neurons, they send out axons and they're little delicate things that cover blood vessels and what have you because they're innovating the smooth muscle of blood vessels to control flow. We just talked about that, right? But they can also come together to form more distinct nerves, bigger nerves, nerves we call splanchnic nerves. Uh, splanchnic comes from a Greek word, splanchnon, referring to the viscera, the organs, right? So splanchnic nerves can pass and travel down through the abdomen and the pelvis. So if you see a little nerve, um, it gets called, yeah, a little autonomic nerve, it gets called a splanchnic nerve. We'll come back to that, right? Usually when I say, where does the parasympathetic innovation to whatever come from? Usually the answer is the vagus nerve. Today it's not. The vagus nerve is one of the cranial nerves, meaning it comes out of the brainstem. And the vagus nerve uh, travels down the neck, down the thorax, into the abdomen, and it carries parasympathetic nerves into those places. So it can reduce the heart rate and uh, trigger the GI tract to get going and things like that, right? But it doesn't reach all the way down into the pelvis, which is fair enough, it's, it's a really long way. So, Parasympathetic nerves in the pelvis come from um, the sacral spinal cord. So the sacral levels of the spinal cord, S2, S3 and S4, if we look inside there, we find parasympathetic nuclei, that is collections of cell bodies of parasympathetic neurons. They send their axons out through the S2, S3 and S4 spinal nerves, holds us here, and then they pass into the pelvis. So they don't have that far to go. They also form splanchnic nerves because they like bundle together and stuff, right? Okay, so sympathetic nerves come from the sympathetic trunk. Uh, the, pel the parasympathetic nerves come from the sacral spinal cord. What about the visceral afferents then? So if we think about those flowing in the opposite direction, because the visceral afferents are carrying that sensory information, that the stretch receptors in the rectum, they're, tra they're, carrying those, they're carrying that information back through their axons to the spinal cord and then they can carry on to wherever they need to get to. So the central nervous system is aware that rectum full quick, sort something out. Um, they tend to follow the same routes as the parasympathetic and the sympathetic neurons. It's logical, right? If you're wiring this up, you're just bundling these things together. They go into the same place, right? Zip tie them together, whatever you want. So that means that the splanchnic nerves are in fact made up of maybe sympathetic and visceral afferent fibers or parasympathetic and visceral afferent fibers. We know what we've got to wire up. We know where the wires are coming from and going to. Let's do the wiring. Okay, so what structures do we see down here then? Hmm. Here's the aorta in the abdomen. Now, if we were dissecting and looking at this, we'd find a fine filigree of nerves covering this, right? Little fine fibers. Um, so there are plexuses here. Um, these are the celiac trunk, superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery, the stubs of them, they come out and supply blood to the gastrointestinal tract. And around those we find what we call plexuses. So we talk about these as mesenteric plexuses. And they have many more names and what have you. So this plexus, now a plexus is not connections between nerves. It's just, it's just wires like a messy trail of wires, because they've all got to go somewhere, right? So the plexus, the, uh, the mesenteric plexuses covering the aorta um, are a mix of parasympathetic fibers, sympathetic fibers, and visceral afferent fibers, doing their thing, going about their business. And this continues to descend until the aorta is no more. So down here, inferiorly, that plexus continues to run down towards the pelvis, and that gets called the superior hypogastric plexus. Now, gastric, you need to think of, think of going a nice belly, right? The belly is the gaster. So you nice belly, and then underneath that belly, that's hypogastric, and that's where we are. So if there's a superior hypogastric plexus, then there's an inferior hypogastric plexus, and that's the one we're really interested in, we're working our way towards, but 
We've got to take a few steps to get there. So these mesenteric plexuses continue down as the superior hypogastric plexus. And we'll see sympathetic fibers following major arteries down to different targets because they need to get everywhere in the body. Okay, that then is one way that sympathetic fibers, sympathetic neurons are gonna send their axons from the superior hypogastric plexus down into the pelvis. And in fact, um, they form hypogastric nerves. There's one on the left and one on the right. So there are two hypogastric nerves sending sympathetic fibers down into the pelvis. And visceral afferent fibers will be traveling with them because that's tidy wiring. But remember, I said that the sympathetic trunk continues all the way down into the pelvis. So the sympathetic trunk in the pelvis will also be contributing sympathetic fibers into the pelvis, into the organs of the pelvis. They, so the nerves that come from the sympathetic trunk in the pelvis as sympathetic nerves are called sacral splanchnic nerves. So because, you know, this is the sacrum, right? The last bit of the, vertebra the, ver the vertebral column before the, the coccyx, the very, very last bit. So the sacral splanchnic nerves are sympathetic and visceral from probably, yeah. um, Okay, now the, ooh, hmm. Now, if we just get a pelvis in there, you can see the sacrum there, and you can see the sacral spinal nerves coming out of it. And they're gonna form the sciatic nerve and fun things like that. But they're also sending out parasympathetic neurons medially to the viscera within the pelvis. The nerves that are carrying, the nerves that are parasympathetic fibers running into the pelvis, they're called pelvic splanchnic nerves, that's what I was trying to say. What a messy way of saying it. Pelvic splanchnic nerves are nerves that come out of um, S2, S3, and S4 as parasympathetic fibers running medial, medially to the organs of the, of the pelvis. Pelvic splanchnic nerves are parasympathetic. Sacral splanchnic nerves are sympathetic. And then all of those fibers merge, find each other, run together to form plexuses, the inferior hypogastric plexuses. And the inferior hypogastric plexuses are in here. I've got a thing. Put the organs ah, back in the pelvis. So this is a female pelvis. Uh, there's the uterus, ovaries on either side, rectums back there, bladders under there. Now, Here's one I made earlier. In fact, here's two I made earlier. That is kind of roughly-ish. <laughs> Something like, these are pipe cleaners. This is illustrative, not accurate anatomy. But <laughs> this, imagine those going straight up there. These are the inferior hypogastric plexuses. In the female pelvis then they lie um, kind of lateral to the rectum, lateral to the, the, the cervix of the uterus, lateral to the, the fornices of the vagina, that's the top bit of the vagina that's meeting the uterus. In the male pelvis, these plexuses would be uh, lateral to like the, the inferior part of the bladder, lateral to the seminal vesicles, lateral to the prostate, that sort of thing here. These are what we've been building towards. These are the inferior hypogastric plexuses. They are uh, plexuses of nerves which are parasympathetic, sympathetic, and visceral afferents. These are the nerves that are innervating the viscera of the pelvis, the organs. These are the nerves that are carrying information about when the bladder is stretched and full, and then tell the bladder to release the internal urethral sphincter and contract the detrusor muscle and that sort of thing, right? This is the inferior hypogastric plexuses. This is the bit I was basically interested in trying to work out what it was and how to describe it better. And these nerves running up here would be the hypogastric nerves. Remember I said there was one on the left and the right. So the hypogastric nerves are linking the superior hypogastric plexus, which would be up here with the inferior hypogastric plexus, which would be down here on either side. 
again, it's pipe cleaners, you know. Um, but this is really difficult to show and visualize, so I hope this helps. Why is it important? Uh, uh, okay, S surgery, right. It, surgery in this area needs to be careful not to damage these nerves. That's about it, really. Um, what would happen if these nerves are damaged? Throw back to the start, as I said, um, there could be, there most likely are going to be effects on uh, urinary continence or fecal continence or sexual function. Um, I could talk to you about the pelvic pain line and how visceral afferent fibers take different routes, which gives different referred pain and it feels different. From, but whenever I talk to obs and gynae surgeons about this, they don't, they, they, they don't, they're not fussed. So <laughs> maybe I'll do that another day. I don't know. Um, and one other point, don't mix this up with the iliohypogastric nerve, which is a different nerve, a different beast. That's a somatic nerve that is gonna innovate somatic skeletal muscle and skin that you can actually feel. So the iliohypogastric nerve is a branch of the um, lumbar plexus. It's out here, the superior and inferior hypogastric nerves, uh, plexuses, and the hypogastric nerves are deep within the, the pelvis and lower abdomen and stuff. All right. I hope that was uh, confusing enough for you, but I tried. Um, see you next week. Mm -hmm.